Hello there. Very good evening to you and welcome to the news tonight. Thursday evening, there's lots making news. So let's get you straight to the headlines. I'm Tracy Shilshi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi leaves on a nine-day tour to France, Germany and Canada. Besides his personal touch, Make in India will be his theme for the trip. Moody's raises India's credit rating outlook to positive. Markets react positively to the statement that it could upgrade the sovereign rating in 12 to 18 months. TRAI slashes tariffs. Roaming call charges to fall by 20% while messaging rates are expected to decline by 75% from the 1st of May. Founder and former chairman of Satyam Computers, Ramalinga Raju and nine others are sentenced to seven years in jail for accounting fraud. 2008 Mumbai attack mastermind Zakir Rehman Lakhvi set free by Pakistani court suspends Punjab government's detention order. Our top story, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has left for his three-nation tour of France, Germany and Canada. In France, the Prime Minister will focus on technology development and tourism cooperation. In Germany, he will pitch the government's Make in India theme for manufacturing. And in Canada, Modi will focus on investment potential and engage with the Indian diaspora. A boat ride with French President Francois Hollande on the River Seine, a walk together through the Hanover Trade Fair with German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and addressing the Indian diaspora along with Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper in Toronto. This is how Prime Minister Narendra Modi will personalize his nine-day foreign trip that started on Thursday. In an interview to a newspaper, the Prime Minister said, and I quote, These three countries are major economies that have great relevance to our development process and growth. They can each contribute in terms of capital flows, technology and best practices. Economic ties are at the top of the agenda for the Prime Minister and his itinerary reflects that. In France, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will first meet the President and the French CEOs in Paris. He will then visit the Airbus factory and discuss building smart cities in Toulouse before heading to Lille to a memorial for Indians who fought and died in the First World War. France and India will also look to finalize a proposed nuclear power project in Maharashtra French company Arriva and Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited are in talks to finalize the agreement. It's a big project and it's for six reactors <coughs> altogether, which will be 10,000 megawatts uh, once uh, built and which will represent a very significant part of the electricity output of India. In Hanover, an informal dialogue with Chancellor Angela Merkel will be held during a walk through the Hanover Messe Industrial Fair where India is a partner this year. The two leaders will inaugurate the India Pavilion and will walk together as they discuss the potential for German manufacturers to make in India. India will be the exclusive uh, partner country of the Hanover Messe and with that India will be high up on the world stage. I think it is a unique opportunity to present Make in India and to present India's techno technological prowess. His final stop in Canada will be driven by two themes, investment in India and reaching out to the Indo-Canadian community. It is the first standalone visit by an Indian Prime Minister to Canada since 1973 and Narendra Modi will travel to Ottawa, Toronto and Vancouver. A deal for nuclear fuel could be announced during the visit. Well, I think there are a number of different areas that we're exploring and further building a very strong cooperation already and, uh, and that includes a wide range, science and technology, defense, defense research. We're also looking at uh, how Canadian capacity in some of the areas directly of interest to the Modi government such as smart cities, intelligent cities as an example. During this visit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will hard sell India as an attractive investment destination. He will woo investors and also project his ambitious Make in India initiative. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV.
And talking of wooing investors in a big confidence vote uh, to the Narendra Modi-led government ahead of his trip, Modi's today raised India's credit rating outlook to positive. It said an upgrade in its sovereign rating is also possible in the next 12 to 18 months. The markets reacted positively with gains on Thursday. What's more, a normal monsoon prediction brings much relief to the government grappling with crop loss after unseasonal rains. Moody's has become the first big rating firm to upgrade India's outlook from stable to positive. It brings the country a step closer to an actual sovereign rating upgrade. Moody's said there is high probability that the Modi government will enhance India's economic growth, allowing the country to outperform its peers over the medium term. Chief Economic Advisor Arvind Subramanian said Moody's upgrade validates the government's reform trust, better growth and fiscal discipline. The government uh, is on you know, what needs to be done for the sake of the economy um, and you know, we hope there will be an investment grade upgrade but that's not what will drive policy going forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean this just, as I said, it validates everything the government has been doing here. Yeah. Pace and direction of economic policy and reform that this government has been carrying it out. It also validates the fine balance that has been struck in the budget uh, between fiscal consolidation and public investment. The addition of uh, the outlook on India from stable to positive by the Modi's uh, reflects the ground realities. Obviously we are very happy about uh, this fact and it will certainly increase and improve the investor confidence around the world about investing in India. Analysts say that revision in outlook will help the government attract more foreign funds necessary to increase investments in the country's infrastructure sector. Minister of State for Finance Jain Sinha said the government has restored the faith of investors and rating agencies on the growth outlook of the Indian economy. The macroeconomic situation over the last uh, 10 months or so while we've been in office uh, has uh, improved dramatically as we would all agree. Uh, obviously due to uh, the actions uh, that we have taken as far as fiscal policy is concerned, as far as reforms are concerned. Uh, and also of course we have benefited from the declining commodity prices, uh, most specific specifically the decline in the price of oil. What will be music to the ears of the government, there is a normal monsoon prediction for this season after massive crop loss due to unseasonal rains across the country. The government hopes this will help in controlling inflation which could spiral in case of a weak monsoon this year. On inflation, uh, our assessment still is that uh, you know, the end year target of six will be easily met and there's going to be room for uh, uh, you know that that target will be surpassed, and uh, the forecast is very much for us, as we said in the survey, between five and five and a half percent. The markets also reacted positively to Moody's upgrade. Both the Sensex and Nifty gained big on Thursday. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, a special CBI court in Andhra Pradesh found Satyam Company founder Ramaling Raju and nine others guilty of corporate fraud. All of them were sentenced to seven years' imprisonment. Here are the details. Six years after the corporate fraud shook Indian markets, a special court declared erstwhile Satyam Company chief B. Ramalinga Raju and nine others were guilty and sentenced them to seven years in jail. Raju was also additionally fined five crore. All ten who have, who have faced prosecution in the Satyam scam, they have been convicted and the sentence imposed is seven years and uh, various sentences ranging from Two years to seven years it was imposed on all the accused. Raju has already been in jail for 32 months. He and former employee G. Ramakrishna were found guilty of destroying evidence, except his brother B. Suryanarayan Raju and former internal chief auditor V. S. Prabhakar Gupta. The eight others were found guilty of forgery and falsification of accounts. Whenever a scam takes place, it is important that those who perpetrated the scam, action is taken to, against them. And they are pronounced guilty in that sense because this kind of scams not only break the confidence or the economic confidence within the country but also end up costing many innocent people their life savings. The CBI said the accounting fraud cost an estimated national loss of 14,000 crore to investors besides helping Raju and others make unlawful gains of 1,900 crore. In the eyes of law there is no big or small person. Every person is judged by the evidence that is brought by the charge that is leveled and by the uh, material that is placed before the court for the purposes of determining whether the crime has been committed by him or not. 
and in the instant case the trial court did come to conclusion that offenses have been established the satam scam came to light on 17th of january 2009 After the firm's founder and then chairman Ramalinga Raju allegedly confessed manipulating the company's account books and inflating profits over many years, the Andhra Pradesh police arrested Raju after he confessed to the fraud along with his brother Rama Raju and others. Around 3,000 documents and 226 witnesses were examined during the trial. Bureau report for Rajya Sabha TV. Here well, here's some good news for you. TRAI has made roaming charges cheaper by up to 23% today, slashing ceiling tariffs for operators from the 1st of May. TRAI has cut the maximum rate that a telecom operator can charge for STD calls on roaming to one rupees 15 paise per minute uh, from a one rupees 50 paise. Similarly, national SMS rate has been reduced to 38 paise from one uh, rupees 50 paise per SMS. A uh, telecom operator can charge a maximum of 80 paise. per minute for a local call instead of rupees uh, of 1 rupee i'm sorry permitted at present for incoming calls during roaming a mobile customer will be required to pay a maximum of 45 paise only per minute instead of 75 paise now on the other hand of course in a blow to consumers the regulator has removed the roaming tariff plan under which the consumer paid the same charges as his home circle or service area while in roaming With that, let's take you through some more national news updates in nationwide. The government has barred Greenpeace India from receiving foreign funds. Its registration under the FCRA has been suspended. Seven of its bank accounts have been frozen. It has been alleged that the NGO has quote unquote prejudicially affected the economic interests of the state. Greenpeace India has been accused of deliberate underreport of foreign contributions and using them partially to fund legal cases. The Supreme Court has pointed out that extended leaves taken by two Italian Marines is causing delay in the fisherman murder case. The court granted one of the two Italian Marines request for an extended medical leave today. The Italian Marines are accused of killing two Indian fishermen off the Kerala coast in February 2012. 1993 Mumbai serial blast convict Yakub Mehman's plea to have his death sentence commuted to life was dismissed by the Supreme Court today. The court had earlier confirmed Mehman's death sentence pronounced by a trial court before he filed this review petition. His mercy plea was rejected by President Pranab Mukherjee last year. The prosecution in the hit and run case today cited evidence to prove that Bollywood actor Salman Khan was under the influence of alcohol and his SUV did not have a technical snag at the time of the accident. The prosecutor argued that Salman and his friend Kamal Khan fled from the accident site without helping the victims on the night of 28 September 2002. Quick break and still ahead India's rescue efforts in Yemen get global praise we'll get you details of that in a bit Prime Minister Modi on his maiden Europe tour huge possibilities from linking up with Eurozone powerhouses France and Germany just what's on offer Watch the big picture at 9:30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Now, 11 Indians rescued by Pakistan were among more than 200 to return home from war torn Yemen last night. The government had it extended the rescue mission by a day to evacuate over 100 Indian nurses remaining in Yemen. India's efforts to help several countries in the evacuation process have also received global praise, with over 500 foreigners from 32 countries rescued by the Navy and Air Force. The operation Rahat is now in the final stage. When stranded Indians are returning back home on special flights, more than 200 arrived since Wednesday night in Kochi and Mumbai. There is a problem as every day in last two weeks um, at the night time the air targeting and the blasting and the, um, the self catching. We cannot uh, survive over there. The uh, situation is very bad, and um, we are suffering the about the food items and the petrol, gas, light. बहुत सुकून मिला सर बिकॉज एक्चुअली वहाँ पे मेन मेन प्रॉब्लम ये है कि ट्रांसपोर्ट बंद हो गया है तो गवर्नमेंट ने इतनी सारी फ्लाइट्स अरेंज की है डन अ वेरी वंडरफुल जॉब 11 इंडियंस हु वर रेस्क्यूड बाय पाकिस्तान नेवी हैव आल्सो रीच्ड होम द पाक गवर्नमेंट अरेंज स्पेशल फ्लाइट फॉर देम टू रिटर्न टू डेली 
We are indeed delighted that our 11 Indian guests uh, have uh, returned to New Delhi, to India safely. As you all know that uh, a Pakistani ship uh, rescued them from Makalla and yesterday they arrived in Karachi. Prime Minister Mohammad Nawaz Sharif directed that uh, these our special Indian guests uh, are uh, flown to New Delhi by a special aircraft. So they just landed and I welcome them uh, here. It was a very nice, you know, very nice voyage. You know, four days in the city and <laughs> we were living on the luxury actually. They gave, gave us all the luxuries what they can, even the Pakistani people. India's efforts to evacuate citizens from other countries have also been praised. The Indian Navy and Air Force helped to evacuate over 500 foreigners from 32 countries. INB Minister Arun Jaitley termed the mission as one of the biggest achievements so far. Meanwhile, Kerala Chief Minister Uman Chandi has appealed to the Prime Minister to extend the air evacuation from Yemen till Saturday. India has so far rescued over 4,500 people from Yemen in the rescue operation. With only a few hundred remaining to be brought back home, the rescue mission is said to be wrapped up soon. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. It's so heartening to see an operation like that, uh, you know, getting so much praise, uh, not just in India but across the world. We've got Alok Bansal, who's the executive editor of the South Asian Institute of Strategic Affairs, joining us uh, this evening. Uh, Mr. Bansal, good evening. You know, India really building itself a reputation of being a first uh, responder, a reliable first responder in the Indian Ocean region. There is no doubt. I think... Uh, Indian Navy, not only by this uh, act, but even in the past, has given adequate uh, indication to the global community that it has a strong maritime capability. And earlier we rescued people from Lebanon, the way we have rescued people now from Yemen, and in the past the way we provided succor to the affected population in times of tsunami have all established that uh, Indian Navy and India's maritime capabilities uh, are enormous and as far as this particular region is concerned, the countries of the region can look towards India in case of any contingency that may arise in future. Also, uh, you know, initially when uh, Operation Rahat was launched, uh, there was a bit of criticism saying it was perhaps a few days late, they could have done a little more ahead. Uh, do you think in a way it was also a good, uh, a good news for India in a sense that, you know, there was no, um, you know, hijacking situation, no kidnapping of Indians, uh, no hostage kind of a situation that was also created. That, of course, helped in also getting all those people back home. Uh, see, the criticism was that we did not anticipate the developments in uh, Yemen as mm. they were uh, happening. But in the end, you must see the clockwork precision with which the people were rescued, both by the Navy and Air Force, and more significantly, uh, the manner in which the Minister of State for External Affairs, General V. K. Singh, personally went there and supervised the evacuation. That talks a lot about the way India did, did it and we rescued uh, citizens of 32 countries which included many of the developed countries of the world That's including, right, including the Western US countries as well. yes, besides yes. of course uh, offering support yes absolutely mm -hmm. US mm -hmm. and uh, more significantly all our South Asian neighbors who wanted uh, their help uh, our help have been provided mm -hmm. and this has undoubtedly established and even Pakistani citizens have been rescued and in a similar gesture, even Pakistan has gone out of its way mm. to rescue Indian citizens from uh, Yemen. And this has actually helped to build good bonhomie between the two countries. And I think uh, this sort of activities in future will establish India's uh, position as a regional power and an emerging global power. Absolutely. Uh, you know, also give us a sense really on the operation itself, Mr. Bansal. Uh, you know, it's still in the process. It's still on. They haven't really quite called it, uh, you know, uh, quits yet. Uh, you know, in fact, the Kerala government saying, can you please extend it for a few more days? Uh, but by the looks of it, is this the biggest uh, civilian evacuation that we have seen in recent years? Uh, yes, you could call it one of the biggest uh, as far as evacuation is concerned. 
about uh, 4500 people have already been evacuated a few hundred are believed to be remaining and many of them are not keen to evacuate because mm. uh, they are married uh, to yemeni citizens and uh, they would like to stay there yes. and uh, face whatever is happening mm. uh, and uh, but uh, this evacuation and earlier Lebanese ev evacuation which Indian Navy had undertaken yes. has established India's credentials as far as evacuating populations from war zones are concerned mm. and in I think post World War II scenarios these have been one of the largest evacuations of civilian populations from war zones. All right, Mr. Alok Bansal of Saisa, thanks so much for joining us and giving us, shedding light really on Operation Rahat, the success that it has been so far and of course uh, gaining global praise. Meanwhile, talking about the situation in Yemen, a warning for Iran really to stop providing support to Houthi rebels destabilizing Yemen, the United States in fact said that it will not stand on the sidelines while its friends and allies are attacked. The conflict in Yemen is intensifying as daily attacks on government buildings, hospitals especially in Sana'a is causing numerous casualties. Amid persistent fighting, Yemen is staring at a catastrophic humanitarian crisis. The United Nations is warning of a civil war even as it appeals to all parties to find a peaceful resolution. However, no side is willing to listen. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry accused Iran of destabilizing the region by backing the Houthi rebels. He said the United States will stand by the Saudi Arabia-led coalition, its friends in the Middle East. We're not... Uh... Uh, you know, looking for confrontation, obviously, but we're not going to step away from our alliances and our friendships and uh, the need to stand with those who feel threatened as a consequence of the choices that Iran might be making. Meanwhile, Iran denied arming the rebels in Yemen. Calling for a halt to the Saudi-led air campaign, its president said all countries in the region should work to resolve the crisis. Pakistan has agreed to work with Iran. Have a ceasefire. Stop aerial bombardment, stop operations on the ground. Allow humanitarian assistance. Start an inter-Yemeni dialogue, intra-Yemeni dialogue. And everybody should facilitate that dialogue and reach a political solution. We are obviously con very seriously concerned about the situation in Yemen. We agree that all stakeholders have to show greater flexibility for ending the bloodshed and preparing the ground for serious negotiation to resolve the crisis. Yemen is not convinced. It has accused Iran of meddling in the conflict and elsewhere in the region. While the war is turning into a power struggle between Iran and Saudi Arabia in the region, Yemen is paying the price, with civilian targets including schools and residential localities being bombed daily. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, here's news that's creating a furor in India. The Lahore High Court today ordered the immediate release of 2611 mastermind Zakir Rahman Lakhvi from jail. It suspended the Punjab government's detention order against Lakhvi under a Public Security Act. Here's, here are the details. The Lahore High Court on Thursday suspended Zakir Rahman Lakhvi's detention orders and ordered his immediate release from prison. The immediate release of the key Lashkar Etoyba operative flies in the face of India's demand for action against the 2611 Mumbai attack perpetrators. News agencies were told that the prosecution lawyer submitted key evidence against Lakhvi, but the court called it unsatisfactory and did not accept it. India reacted strongly to the development. Our position is clear that Pakistan's authority and Pakistan's investigation agency is वो सारा पुक्ता सबूत जो उसके पास अवेलेबल है वो कोर्ट में देना चाहिए और सिंसियरली उसको केस को प्रेजेंट करना चाहिए ये हमारा पोजीशन है दिस ऑर्डर क्लियरली शोस दैट द डिटेंशन ऑर्डर व्हिच वाज पास्ड बाय द पाकिस्तानी गवर्नमेंट फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम इज नथिंग बट जस्ट एन आई वॉश माय बेसिक क्वेश्चन इज व्हेन द क्रिमिनल कॉन्स्पिरेसी वाज हैच ऑन द सोइल ऑफ द पाकिस्तान why they did not collect the evidence? Why they did not present the evidence before the Pakistan court? Ever since this government has come, in the last 10 months, this is the 10th report of Lakhvi having been released. And this is primarily because this government has been sending out mixed signals or very ambiguous signals to Pakistan. 
An anti-terror court granted bail to Lakhvi last December. It drew a stern response not only from New Delhi but also the US as well. Since then, Pakistan was holding Lakhvi in detention under the maintenance of public order law. Despite being charged in the 26-11 case, there has been no progress in the cases of Lakhvi and six other suspects for over five years. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. In other news, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj signed a joint agreement with Turkmenistan on key bilateral and regional issues today. The two countries agreed to fast-track the ambitious $10 billion Tapi gas pipeline project. Turkmenistan is the holder of the world's fourth-largest natural gas reserves and is keen to revive plans to build a Tapi pipeline through Afghanistan to the markets of Pakistan and India. The planned pipeline would have initial capacity for 33 billion cubic meters a year and would run for nearly 2,000 kilometers across Afghanistan and Pakistan. On the second day of her three-day visit, Sushma also held meetings with the President and the Foreign Minister of the country. Her visit is being seen as a preparatory one before Prime Minister Modi's tour in July this year. We a meeting with the Honorable President. We talked about bilateral relations, all pervasive, all important issues we talked about. We talked about defense cooperation, talked about fertilizer plant all right with that let's change tracks and get you all the sports news in sports speed already out of the summit clash a misfiring india worked hard to get the better of a lowly canadian side 5-3 to register their first win in the 24th sultan aslan shah cup hockey tournament rupindra pal singh and v r raghunath scored through penalty corners before ramandeep singh scored two field goals Sadhbir Sadhbi, Sadhbi Singh uh, rounded off the tally with another field strike. Saina Neva lost her world number one ranking just days after becoming the first Indian woman badminton player to gain that status. She lost the top ranking when she lost a gallant fight against Olympic champion Lee Shiru in the semi-finals of the Malaysia Open Super Series. Saina became the world number one after exploits at the India Open last month. Tim Bunner made his debut for the Sacramento Kings on Wednesday, becoming the first player of Indian descent to play in the high-profile National Basketball Association League. The 22-year-old came on with 16 seconds remaining in the Kings' 116-111 victory over the Minnesota Timberwolves. The 7 feet 5 inches Canada-born centre signed a 10-day contract to join the Kings' roster. And Cristiano Ronaldo headed his 300th goal for Real Madrid in a labor 2 0 La Liga victory at neighboring Rayo Vallecano on Wednesday night. The prolific Portugal forward, who is five clear of Messi at the top of the scoring chart, is the third player after Raul and Alfredi Stefano to score 300 goals for Real. And that's it on the news tonight from the entire team here. Good night.